Hi, this is Terry Sama from PMML. Today I would like to present to you the multifamily market in the province of Quebec for the month of July 2021. So as you know, historically, normally in the month of July, we have a normally we have a transactional volume that decreases and also uh, we are much less busy than usual. This was not the case for this month of uh, this month of July. And the reason for that is a lot of transactions that were supposed to take place in the month of June and notarized in June were uh, were late and basically had to notarize in July. So we did have. Uh, a lot of transactions uh, that ha were, have taken place in the, the first two quarters of the year. As you know, the transactions these days uh, take uh, between three to six months to um, finalize and then notarize. Uh, because of that, we had a lot of transactions in the pipeline that were supposed to notarize in the month of June that did not notarize in June, but notarized in July. The reason for that, we had a lot of professionals that were uh, linked to, to the transactions that uh, were overloaded. For example, the surveyors were overloaded with a, an exceptional amount of uh, certificate of locations that had to be carried out. The environmental companies were also um, swamped with requests for financing, refinancing, and purchase and sales. And also the notaries, which, were, which are normally historically very busy in the month of June, uh, notably with uh, transactions of residential housing and multifamily also uh, dwellings that are transacted in June were overloaded. So a lot of the transactions that were supposed to take place in June took place in July. Now let's go see the statistics for the market. If we're looking at the greater uh, Montreal region and we're comparing ourselves to the month of May, in the May we had $261 million in volume uh, for multifamily, we went up to 310 million in June, and we uh, maxed out at 386 million in July, which is exceptional. If we're looking at the island of Montreal itself, without uh, getting the uh, taking the greater region of Montreal into consideration, we had 167 million in the month of May. We went up to 219 million. Uh, 219 million in June, and we're up to 239 million in July. So if you're taking the month of June, you're taking the volume in transactions on the island of Montreal for the month of June, you're adding the month of July, we're up to $460 million worth of real estate that notarized in those two months, which is exceptional. If we're looking at uh, Quebec City, which is the capital region of Quebec, uh, we were at 27 million in uh, May, we went up to 48 million in June, and we maintain 49 million in the month of July. So that's close to um, close to $100 million worth in tra of transactions in the Quebec region, which is also exceptional. Gatineau, which is close to Ottawa, went from 13 million in the month of May down to 9 million uh, in the month of June and up to 23 million in the month of July. So uh, Gatineau right now is really a region that you want to look at. Uh, there's a lot of newer properties which are being built in that area right now. Uh, we have all the influence of Ottawa. We have a lot of buyers of Ottawa crossing the bridge, which they did not do before. Historically, buying in gets no. So I definitely think that if you're a purchaser, you should be looking at that region. Now let's go to Sherbrooke, which is a university-based uh, city, uh, which is in the southern part of Quebec. Uh, we uh, transacted in May. The market transacted $15 million worth of transaction. We went down to $12 million in the month of June, so we maintained. And historically, we did $89 million, so that's a huge jump for Sherbrooke uh, in the month of July. The reason why we did that is we had a major transaction that was carried out for that area. And I would like to expose to you my top five of the month. Every month, I give you my top five transactions uh, for the, that, that are coming from my analyst uh, department. Uh, my top one is in Sherbrooke. Uh, two 10-story ten uh, uh, concrete buildings uh, detached with views on all sides. That transacted in that market 
in the month of July, purchased by a REIT that has most of its assets in the western part uh, of Ontario and in Toronto, and also that is buying uh, assets in the outskirts of Montreal, purchased this asset, and the fact that that REIT purchased that asset at that location, we should be attracting other institutional buyers to do the same, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, now, this transaction um, took place, and the buildings are a little west of the nation's lake. If you know the old Sherbrooke area, um, uh, that's where all the restaurants are, etc. And it's a sector that's being uh, commercially redeveloped right now. Um, a great view on either side of those buildings since they're 10 stories high, and usually the buildings are much lower in that area. So definitely they stand out. A transaction that took place close to $80 million for over 350 doors. That transaction was close to 220,000 per door. If you're looking at the asset, uh, the uh, units come with uh, heating paid by the owner. Some units are, are rented out with furniture. So definitely that REIT is gonna be um, repositioning that asset oh, on the short term uh, to go and attract um, the higher paying clientele in that area. Let's leave Sherbrooke. Let's go to Montreal, northwest part of Montreal, Ville Saint Laurent, Saint Lawrence um, city. Uh, a large asset with a large footprint, uh, concrete, 12 stories, uh, very impressive, 217 doors. That asset sold for a very reasonable price lower than $160,000 per door. For the square footage of that asset, that's, that's quite a good deal. Uh, parkings inside and out. It's a consortium that sold. In that building, you have a lot of amenities. You have interior and outside parking, indoor a pool, sauna, a convenience store, 24-hour uh, security, etc. cetera. Uh, so you're attracting, attracting a definite uh, type of, uh, of uh, tenant base. And we're definitely going to be seeing optimization on this asset if you're looking at the price per door. Um, I'm sure that the buyer is going to optimize it greatly and use the square footage as a definite asset uh, for, to leverage your rents. Definitely. Uh, my top three, uh, City of Mount Royal, which is uh, the, uh, like the west side of Montreal. Um, it's an area where you have housing, uh, which is deluxe. Uh, it's a small area of Montreal. There's not many multifamilies that transact over time in that area because they did not build uh, many assets, uh, multifamily assets. You have Outremont, which is another uh, similar type of, uh, of uh, venue, which is right next door, the uh, same type of neighborhood. Um, uh, housing is very, very high in price in that neighborhood. So what we have here is we have a REIT also here that purchased a uh, refurbished building, completely repositioned. The transaction took place at close to $470,000 per door, um, which is very impressive for the Mar Montreal market, but is not that much of a surprise if you're looking at the rents that the purchaser is pulling out of that, this asset. Uh, we have one, two, and three bedroom apartments uh, in the building, all deluxe units above condo grade. Uh, definitely a very nice asset that was purchased, uh, 28 units, a lot of inclusions, major renovations took place in 2019. The seller of this asset, we know that the buyers are REIT, but the sellers also specialize in repositioning commercial and industrial assets that he repositions into commercial and multifamily assets. So definitely uh, uh, an order that was placed probably with a very nice refurb. A very impressive transaction. Now, if we go in the first outskirts of Montreal to the south, we're on the south shore of Montreal in the uh, city of Longueuil, which is a very, very large city in Quebec um, uh, of, of uh, mid-grade, if you like. Uh, the asset is several buildings uh, in the southern part of Longueuil, which is very close to the local St. Hubert Airport, close to the train station close to Chambly Boulevard, which is a north-south access, semi-commercial access uh, to, to, the, to the lot. 160 doors sold in one shot at a very impressive price of uh, close to $130,000 per door. So uh, congratulations to, to the buyer. Uh, it's definitely a, uh, an asset that's gonna be repositioned. The seller is leaving the market, 
but the buyer is uh, been on the market for quite a while as and is in a, a, a um, buying phase uh, still in development mode basically right now and is buying out assets so this asset is going to be repositioned the buildings are all one uh, next to the other picking up a large uh, uh, footprint the land is very very large so basically by buying those 160 doors you're basically controlling uh, the, the rent base in that area. That area is surrounded by, first of all, a commercial street, but also a residential bungalow style um, uh, area. So very nice asset. Uh, nothing was included in, in the, uh, for the tenant base, so no heating, no hot water, etc. for this asset. All of the assets that we saw previously, uh, most of them have the hot water, etc. included. Now, um, I would like to talk to you about Quebec City. Quebec City is definitely are doing very well right now in, in multifamily sales. We're seeing more and more larger assets sold. So a lot of uh, owners in that area are, are, are transacting, letting go of their larger assets. We could see a change in hands right now in the market. I had, uh, I had to really do a difficult choice here because there was a lot of interesting assets that I wanted to talk to you about today. But my top five is going to end in Livy. Livy is a municipality which is on the south part of the uh, right across the river from from uh, old Quebec uh, it's uh, you have to cross a bridge and it's southern part of the St. Lawrence River an interesting asset I chose it because it's a recent asset that was built in 2014 so very new looking but the 2014 style uh, 64 dollars uh, that was sold in two buildings close to eight million dollars a little bit above eight million dollars um, the buyer has his, most of his assets in Quebec City and in the, the Tree Rivers region. Uh, his assets are, are, are all over the, those, uh, those two uh, regions. So the, the buyer really knows the area and he purchased close to 130000 per door, which makes very, very uh, much sense for an asset which is uh, concrete construction and of 2014 construction. So I'm guessing that he's going to optimize uh, the asset there is an elevator also in that building uh, exterior parking so if we're wrapping up today and we're looking at the month of July historically if I'm looking I've been in the business for 18 years uh, this month of July has been very very busy and the fact that a lot of the transactions that were supposed to take place in June were uh, have been late and that the general market is late uh, we're seeing a lot of transactions and, and a lot of volume taking place in July. So I'm guessing that the volume in August is going to should be a little lower. Uh, but if you're looking at the volume in assets sold, we're increasing. The price per door seems to be uh, at the increase or, or at least maintaining a very high volume in price. So which makes the multifamily uh, market very, very interesting. I know that there's a lot of assets being refinanced right now. Our refinancing department is very, very busy at PMML. So a uh, very interesting uh, month of July. I'm looking forward to give you the information in the month of August. So from now to then, take care.